in honor of the Little League World Series. In my trip last week back to my roots, my stomping grounds in Oklahoma City, allow me to tell you quickly the story of the worst loss I ever suffered, the worst in my life. A loss I suffered when I was all of 10 years old, a loss that haunts me to this day and will haunt me to my grave, trust me. This loss came painfully to mind on my trip back. This always, this loss always, always, always comes up soon after I touch down in Oklahoma City. This loss always comes up when I return to play the golf course I grew up on, Lincoln Park, the East and West courses, just celebrated their 100th anniversary, the big tournament over the weekend. Congratulations to them. To me, it's the greatest public course in the world, but that's just me. For the last, I don't know, 40 odd years, the cart barn at Lincoln Park has been run by a legend, an institution by the name of Wendy Miller, who was born about three weeks before me in 1951, and who grew up a couple houses down from me on a dirt road called Grand Boulevard in Oklahoma City. I have known Wendy Miller. In those days, he was just Jerry Lee Miller. I've known him since I was five years old. Had the greatest collection of baseball cards I've ever seen always from the start, an exceptional athlete, from the start, a very good golfer. In fact, fairly recently won the Oklahoma Senior Amateur. And Wendy is jockey size to this day. He's all of about 5'5"-ish. Five, I don't know what he weighs, 130 pounds, 35. Sort of Hogan size, Ben Hogan-esque. And he can play in that ballpark of Ben Hogan. And every year, the first face I see when I get to Lincoln Park is usually Wendy. For the record, we nearly lost him a couple of months back. Had a heart attack on the ninth green, fortunately near the clubhouse, or we might have lost him permanently. Quadruple bypass, lived to tell, onward and upward. He's back working, talking his trash. He's the greatest character I've ever known. He's gonna be a big character in my novel, Wendy Miller. He, he speaks in Wendy-isms, in Wendy lingo. Every, every sentence seems backward. He hits a great golf shot. That's not any good. Well, that means it's great. And he always says to me, I'm gonna come out and rail you. I'm gonna play with some of my other friends and he's gonna come out and rail as in horse racing, as in by the rail watching the horses exercise in the morning, rail jockeys. I'm gonna come out and rail you. I'm gonna come out and watch you, follow your group. Okay. So I see Wendy this time and we hug. How are you? How are you? And, and not a minute later, we look at each other year after year and we simultaneously say Ridgeview, Ridgeview. And for the next 10, 15 minutes, we commiserate about losing that game to the Ridgeview Rams when we were 10 years old. We played for our grade school team called the Mayfair Chipmunks. I know it sounds like a silly name, but it wasn't silly to us. We wore, played in t-shirts with red lettering Mayfair chipmunks and with a, <laughs> a little red chipmunk back on its haunches eating a nut, all in red. To this day, we have chipmunks pride. And over the course of our first three years playing for the Mayfair chipmunks, 
not only did we not lose a game, we never came close to losing a game. We were the Yankees of Oklahoma City. We were the Mantle Maris Yankees of that day. We just flat out dominated. I, I just have memories of riding in parents' cars after games to the Dairy Queen, where we all got like a dime in those days to spend on whatever we wanted. And we're chanting out the windows, we beat Buchanan 17 to one. We beat Monroe 17 to one. Every game seemed like it ended 17 to one. And in our district, it was the Buchanan Bruins and the Madison Magpies, the Monroe Redbirds, the Cleveland Bulldogs, the Kaiser Kangaroos, and the Sequoia Bobcats. So those teams, we just crushed and we play each of them twice. That's the regular season. But at the end of our third season, you get to go on and play in the city and state tournaments. So we dominate the first couple of rounds of the city tournament when we're 10. We'd just beaten a team from Fillmore, close to downtown Oklahoma City. We were out on the northwest side. We beat them like 17 to 1, the Fillmore Eagles. And so in the city finals, we're going to face a team kind of an upper crusty team from a wealthier neighborhood, far wealthier than ours, because ours was lower middle class, Ridgeview, close to Nichols Hills, which is the upper crusty neighborhood in Oklahoma City. Maybe some Nichols Hills kids went there, even though there was a Nichols Hills grade school and a West Nichols Hills, but Ridgeview was right in that same neighborhood, but out of our district. So we never played them, we didn't know them, but boy, did we get to know them. And as fate would have it, on that Monday night, we got to play the city finals for the first time in our lives under lights and for the first time in our lives at a major league style ballpark called Dutch Lindsay Field in Northwest Oklahoma City that featured a backstop that was major league distance from home plate. What is it, 30 or 40 feet away? Well, we just played on our neighborhood diamond where the backstop, the wire mesh backstop was right behind me because I was the catcher. It was like five feet behind me. So in those days, I could really throw. Any pass ball was a huge benefit to me. I, I actually looked forward to pass balls because it was gonna ricochet right back to me, like go right up the wire mesh, right back to me. I could turn and gun down the runner at second before he knew what hit him. So. I never thought about pass balls. I never tried to correct pass balls because I loved pass balls. But all of a sudden, I'm looking, it's, it's 40 feet back there. And for the first time that night, our parents bought us game pants, real baseball pants. We played in jeans and t-shirts with red hats with an M for Mayfair on them, but just jeans and t-shirts and Puma like soccer kind of shoes. Everybody wore those Puma cleats, I guess they were, but we got actual baseball pants for the city finals with stirrup socks, red stirrup socks. We looked the part and our parents were so excited about us going to state that they set up to have a photographer be there after the Ridgeview Rams game to take our team picture for the season. That's how confident we were, even though we heard Oh, Ridgeview's got something we'd never seen before, a left-handed pitcher. So our coach, Roy Wade, said, well, let's have a practice on Sunday, and I'll go get one of the older kids. He had an older son named Steve, and a kid named Timmy Klein, who was four years older, left-handed pitcher, came and pitched batting practice to us on Sunday. We ate it up. We had no problem seeing the ball out of the left side, the wrong side, and seeing it tailing away. No problem. Good to go. And I got to tell you, we were loaded. Wendy came by his name, Wendy, because he played second base in one Oklahoma afternoon. It was blowing so hard that poor little Wendy got picked up by a gust of wind and lofted toward the pitching rubber. We didn't have a mound, we just had a rubber. And one of our other coaches, an assistant named Teeb Harris, suddenly called him Wendy and it stuck. That's how he got to become Wendy. But we had, we were just loaded. We had 
Greg Brand at third, Steve Veach at first. They both went on to football scholarships at Wichita State. My best friend John Corey was shortstop. He went on to play quarterback at New Mexico Military. Wendy at second, I caught. And we had on the mound Steve Harris, a man-child who was shaving at age 10. Seriously, he threw the equivalent of 100 miles an hour at age 10. He was just bigger and stronger and faster than any of us. And he went on to be an All-State running back for my high school and, and linebacker and went on to play on scholarship at the University of Oklahoma. Wrecked his knee, didn't amount to much. Great high school athlete. Great kid pitcher. The best. So we're, we're not afraid of any Ridgeview Rams. We're going to state. So what happens in the first inning? I come up with a couple of men on. Steve Harris was on first. I believe Greg Brand had led off, was on second. And they had a left-handed pitcher named Mark Stanley who went on to pitch at Oklahoma State. He was really good. But I could see the ball coming out of his hand just fine. I hit against him all the way up through high school. I always hit him pretty well. And I caught one right on the screws and belted it between left and center in the gap all the way to the fence. We'd never had a fence, an outfield fence. We played on open lots. And everybody ran, and Greg Brand and Steve Harris scored, and I had a two-run triple in the bottom of the first inning. And we led two to nothing. And we continued to lead two to nothing throughout the game because... Every time we had men in scoring position, we couldn't get the hit that opened the floodgates the way we opened them on all the teams in our little league. So now we come to the top of the last inning. And now, for whatever reason, Steve Harris gets a little wild. And now I get real shaky-handed because it's the first time in my life I'd felt any pressure because I'm glancing over my shoulder as the catcher thinking, that's a long ways back there. And one thing leads to another, and maybe there was a wild pitch or two, but there were pass balls six or eight. And without getting a hit in the top of the last inning, Ridgeview Rams are running wild. And pitch after pitch, it's under my legs, it's to my left, it's to my right. And I find myself throwing off my mask, scrambling back into the darkness 30 or 40 feet after pass balls, diving in the grass after them, my shin guards clanking against each other, my chin protector hit me up under the chin, my chest protector hit me up under the chin. It was a nightmare a desperate nightmare. And every time I retrieved the ball, sliding in the grass and turned to throw to Steve Harris covering home plate, another jubilant Ridgeview Ram was crossing said plate. When I came to at the end of the top of the last inning, Ridgeview led four to two. And we had the bottom of the order coming up in the bottom of the last. And Mark Stanley made short order of the bottom of our order, one, two, three, over and out. And the Mayfair Yankees, as in Chipmunks, had to stand there in horror watching the Ridgeview Rams. I got to know all of them. Freddie Daniels, Mike Kazerman, Steve Cargill, Stan Lawrence. I, I got to know all of them. I, I had to watch the Ridgeview Rams celebrating, jumping up and down on the pitcher's mound. They were going to state, and we weren't. And the photographer had been paid for, and he was there. Most of our parents didn't have a lot of money, so once you pay for the photog, you take the picture. I have the picture somewhere. I've moved a couple of times. It's in a box somewhere. I didn't have time to dig it out, and frankly, I didn't have the heart to dig it out. But I have the picture, and every Mayfair chipmunk is crying big tears. Tears are just dripping down our faces. Because that night, 
was the first time we felt what it felt like to lose. It was the first time I felt what it felt like to flat out choke my guts out. I did, I was choking my guts out. And it was a shocking new experience because I had never experienced it in my life. We were stunned, we were horrified, we were devastated. We were so good. And we were so done. It was over. The Ridgeview Rams were going to state and we weren't. And you may not believe this, but in a weird way, that loss has propelled me my whole life. It's propelled my career. It really sticks with me. And it really helps me to see Wendy Miller every summer and commiserate and talk about how did we lose that game? And I unfortunately have a pretty good idea how. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.